Laura Schreiber here. As a mom of twins and a super cute dog, sometimes it's hard to know which end is up. Between my work as a full-time voiceover actress and being a mom and a wife, it never feels like there's enough time in the day. Anyone else feel like that? Lucky for me, I'm not in it alone. I have lots of amazing friends who have figured a few things out. So we've got your back, and together, working moms can support each other. Okay, Hi, Rebecca. Hi. I have some. Sorry. With Rebecca Gilman, architect and mom of two boys. Yeah. It's so nice to have you here today. Thank you. It's really good to be here. It's a shame we're inside on such a beautiful day. I know. We should be outside. We should. So I would love for you to tell us a little bit about your family and how your responsibilities of, as a mom and an architect have changed over the years. Yeah, so um, I had a full practice and I have two boys. So it's, you know, been really busy trying to balance the two. And I would say, if anything, um, I sort of whittled down my responsibilities. I kind of weaned down my practice to a level that was manageable so that I could have a work-life balance because it got a little bit crazy doing 10 houses a year. Oh, I'm sure. I can't even imagine. That's, that's amazing. So what are the biggest challenges for you now as a working mom, do you think? So I think the biggest challenges are, you know, staying focused on my goals and growing towards what I want to do, but also making sure. It's really all about balance, mm -hmm. uh, keeping focused on my work life, but also trying to continue to grow the practice. Do you have tips for how you cope? Any trip t tips or tricks for the rest of us? Yeah, so I, you know, I was thinking about some of your questions, and I think the main tip is that, at least for me, it's been really helpful to know that my, my focus is really on my family, and then I do work. And that has been sort of an evolution over the last couple of years. Whereas in the beginning, I did work, and whenever the family interrupted, I got really annoyed. Um, and it was, I felt it was a distraction. But I feel now with a new focus where it is really very much about the family and I do work. Somehow that's changed my attitude and it's made me much more, more balanced, more patient. That's so interesting. And it took years of perspective to learn that, huh? Yeah, it took a lot of, of trial and error. So is there anything else besides that that you know now that you wish you knew when you were younger? Yeah, I wish I knew um, that there would be, you know, roadblocks and also that there are times when you can take a step back. So I had a contractor at one point after I had kids. It, I didn't take breaks after I had kids. I went right back to work. But there were times when they grow, as you know, that sometimes they need more attention. Mm -hmm. And at one point I decided to take a year off and I let one of my contractors know that. And his answer was, Rebecca, you're never gonna be able to get back into the field. You know, your contracts are gonna go cold, people won't respect you. And I took a year off and I stepped back in as if nothing had ever happened. Mm -hmm. So really my advice to anyone who's um, you know, a working mom is that take the breaks when you need to and it's not really all about the resume anymore. You know, if you have a resume gap, it's okay. You can step in and out of the workforce as you need to. So Rebecca, has it been different now more recently than it was when your kids were younger? I think it is, it's very different. You know, I have an 11 and 13 year old now. So I think it's a lot easier to be working, but when you have young kids and you return to work right away, the way that I did, when they're like three days old, and even when they're up to five, you have to be ready to feel a certain amount of guilt. And I got really good advice from a working mom at that point who said, just live, just be at peace with the guilt. It's going to be there. And also remember that you're not going to be 100% good at being a mom and 100% good at your job. Something, something is going to suffer and you have to be ready for that. And with all of us as being perfectionists, that's very hard to get used to. You know, you go to graduate school, you excel, you know, you get great grades. Then you have, it's like a sick joke. All of a sudden you have to work and juggle a million things. So it's sort of like being told, okay, you're really good at this, but now stand on one foot um, and hop 
and you know you're you're given all these complications that's really the life of a working mom so you have to be ready to do everything at about 80 percent and realize you can't be a, a perfectionist and you're not going to be really good at everything so when things when the chips fall and you forget things with the kids and you know their homework isn't perfect you have to let it go and that really was helpful when they were little that's amazing i wish someone had told me that because in my first career when I was teaching, I only knew how to do it one way. And I couldn't imagine my life as a mom and, and teaching because I couldn't reconcile the needs of both worlds because I only knew how to teach so wholeheartedly and to give everything to my students and I couldn't figure out how to go back. So I, I wish somebody had told me something like that back then. That's so helpful and so insightful. Thank you. And others outside of you don't see it, but you are very hard on yourself naturally. Right, right. And I think the other thing that has changed that's really shifted in the later years is that you just have to remember if you have little kids or if you have bigger kids that your state of mind counts for a lot. Mm. So I feel that I'm much more peaceful in myself um, as I've adjusted to work life and having kids. And you bring that back to your family. So if you have peace of mind, you're going to bring that to your kids and you're going to bring that to your work and sort of centering yourself so that things don't get to you or frazzle you when you have to balance so much it really counts for a lot. So you have to find that somewhere. Hmm. That's great. That's so helpful. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. That's fantastic. You know, it's interesting because I, I think that that's something that will resonate with women in all different fields because I've spoken to so many women, whether they're in medicine and engineering, and this pressure that we can't stop even after having a child is so profound. So I think that that's such great advice. Thank you. Any other, like if you had like one piece of advice that you want people to take away from this talk? Well, I think it's about keeping your skills strong. Um, I never, I never let my, you know, I, I didn't let my work life get ellipsed at all. So I was always, I always had my finger in something. And I always had a focus on my work to whatever degree it was. So as my kids grew, um, I was able to stay fresh in the workforce. And I think the other piece of advice is I would say that networking, you know, this is cliche, but networking is very important and that you are your own product. So many of my leads have come from friends like you. They come from times when you really don't think you're networking. I've never really done, you know, very formal networking. It, it really comes by just being in the world, being who you are, and then people refer you or in your work life. It's really about, you know, just having a certain principle and people pick up on that. That's amazing. And again, that's another tip that I think will resonate for women in all different fields. So th those, those are great pieces of advice. Thank you so much, Rebecca. So if somebody wants to find you for a project, how can they get in touch with you? Well, my uh, website is galmanarchitecture.com. And I've done a lot of residential all through the years here in New Jersey. That's great. Wonderful. Well, I so appreciate your time today. And as a thank you, I'm going to drop off at your house since you live nearby. This super cute tank top that I made, and it says, don't ever let anyone dull your sparkle. And, um, and then on the back, it says, hashtag got your back. I don't know if you can see it. I, I see it's it. It's really cute, and it's really soft, so I really like it, and I hope you love it, and that when you go running in the park, you, you think of this time and of all of our it. fun together. I love so, it. Thank, Thank you, Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Okay, wait, I'm going to hit stop recording now. Hold on. Remember, our dreams are all possible. Don't ever let anyone dull your sparkle. Together, our sparkle is brighter. Copyrights and production rights by Laura Schreiber Voice, LLC.